Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for gold for the trading week ending Friday 1st of May. A target for the bullish wave count for downward movement remains the same at 1324 and the main bearish wave count still expects a downward trend for several months to new lows below 1046.27 but the short term target for that count is at 1607. I do have an alternate, if price makes a new high above the prior major high at 1744 then the target would be at 1980, that's quite high. Main wave count first, this is still the main wave count, it expects that the bear market has been interrupted by a big bullish movement and the bear market for gold is going to resume and when you look at the structure at the monthly chart level you would expect to see a B wave within a pullback, within a huge bear market because they subdivide as three wave structures and bear markets are interrupted by B waves, counter trend movements. From this low to this high, this upward movement does fit very well as a double zigzag and that's a pretty common structure for a B wave. So the bigger Elliott wave pattern from the bull market high is A, B, C. Corrective structures subdivide A, B, C and now I'm expecting wave C down to move below the end of A to avoid a truncation. I'm not going to calculate a target for wave C until the bullish wave count is invalidated because that target's going to be quite low. Suffice to say at this stage for this main preferred wave count I'm expecting C to make new lows reasonably below the end of A. The structure for super cycle B is a double zigzag the first zigzag in the double is labelled cycle wave W and it's complete here. The double is brought joined by a corrective structure in the opposite direction labelled X and the second zigzag in the double may be complete subdividing 5, 3, 5. And until we get a new swing low below this point we're not going to have reasonable confidence in this bearish wave count. And that would be the first earliest confidence point and that's from a classic technical analysis point of view as well as an Elliott wave point of view. Note that this bearish wave count from this low to this high sees this upward movement as a three wave structure and when you look at it at the weekly chart level it really does look like a three wave structure. That's important when we get to the alternate bullish wave count. Let's take a look at this at the daily chart level where this high here is this point here. If we have a high in place then we should be starting to see a five wave structure down develop. This particular market does usually start new trends relatively slowly. I'm just going to go back to the weekly chart. This was a reasonably slow start to this upward trend and so we can expect quite reasonably normally a reasonably slow start to this downward trend. If you go back and look at the major all time high for gold and you see how deep those early corrections were it was a reasonably low start to that big bearish movement as well. So this behaviour here is absolutely normal behaviour for this particular market. If we have a high in place then no second wave correction within the new trend may move beyond the start of its first wave. If this wave count is invalidated with a new high above this point then we will use the alternate bearish wave count. Invalidation for Elliott wave rules is absolute. No part of a second wave may move beyond the start of the first wave. A new high by a fraction of a cent on a tick chart is enough to invalidate the wave count and it doesn't need to be on a closing basis. Intraday invalidations are absolute. At the hourly chart level here's the end of the first bounce in this potential new bear market. I'm labelling it minor wave 2. I'm labelling this the start of a third wave at minor degree with another 1, 2, 1, 2. There may now be a series of three overlapping first and second waves along the way down. If Minuet 2 continues higher, look out for it to find resistance at the upper edge of this best fit channel. I've drawn this channel from this high to this high and pulled a parallel copy down on this low. So far it contains most of this earlier, sorry, later downward movement. Minuet 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 above the short term invalidation point. 
The target for the short to mid term is for minor 3 to reach 1.618 the length of minor wave 1. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling from this low to this high down 1 degree, then instead of seeing primary wave C over as an impulse here, this could have just been wave 1 within primary C. Primary C may not be over and it may be continuing higher. The target is for primary C to reach equality in length with primary A and you can best see primary A at the weekly chart level. That's a common Fibonacci ratio between waves A and C. This is an alternate wave count at this stage because it doesn't have as much support from classic technical analysis. We'll get to that in the second half of this video. But if we see a new high by any amount at any time frame, even a fraction of a cent on a tick chart intraday, then we can have some confidence in this wave count and then we may use this target. If intermediate two is not over here, if it continues lower, it may not move beyond the start of one. A new low below this price point would add quite a lot of confidence to the first main daily bearish wave count. At the hourly chart level, this downward movement is now seen as a zigzag, 5, 3, 5. If minor 2 continues lower, it may not move beyond the start of minor wave 1. And here's the target copied over from the daily chart. At the weekly chart level, this is an alternate wave count. It is very bullish. It looks at the possibility that the bear market for gold was over back down here at 1046 in December 2015. But when you look at that bear market at the monthly chart level, it looks like a five wave impulse. It could be a multiple zigzag. It could be a corrective structure. But corrective structures usually have pretty obvious three wave movements, especially at higher time frames like the monthly chart. And that bear market doesn't have a very obvious three wave look to it. There's not an obvious B wave within it. So this doesn't have as good a look at the monthly chart level, but let's consider all possibilities. In the bigger picture of an Elliott wave pattern, this bear market is seen as a complete super cycle degree fourth wave, or sorry, grand super cycle fourth wave. And so a fifth wave may have begun here. So far, a first wave may be over here, a second wave may be over here, a third wave may be over here, and a fourth wave at cycle degree may be incomplete. If we see a bear market ending here and the start of a new bull market beginning here, then the first movement within a bull market must be seen as a five wave structure. If you try and see that over here, it looks like a rather obvious three, and that seems very forced. So you can see it over here and then the correction following it beginning. The problem now is within the correction. If we see a first wave over here and a second wave beginning here, the second wave may be over here as a double flat correction. The first flat in the double is labelled primary wave W and it subdivides 3, 3, 5. Intermediate C has to subdivide as a five wave structure. The problem is there is an obvious triangle right here in this position. You cannot label a triangle for a second wave as the only corrective structure. And so this wave count has to ignore that rather obvious triangle. Whereas if you go back to my very first weekly chart, you can see a triangle in this position. And so that wave count has a better fit. And this wave count has a problem in terms of Elliott wave, which reduces its probability. Now I know that's all quite complicated, but when you try and have alternate wave counts, you're trying to see which one has a better fit. And if you can find different wave counts and one of them has a better fit and others don't, then you can rank them in order of probability based on Elliott wave structure. And that's what I'm trying to do here. We've got cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, and now cycle four may not move into cycle one price territory, hence the invalidation point. Remember those Elliott wave rules are absolute. A new low by any amount, any time frame, even a fraction of a cent on a tick chart intraday is enough to firmly invalidate this wave count. I will, this is cash data, not futures, and so no overlap will be allowed. The rule is absolute. 
Cycle four may be unfolding as a flat correction and expanded flat. They're pretty common corrective structures and they subdivide three, three, five. Let's take a look at this at the daily chart level from this high here, this high here, three, three, five. Primary C needs to subdivide now as a five wave structure. Here, primary B is a 1.2 length of primary wave A. That's nicely within the common range for B waves within flats of 1 to 1.38 times. The target for primary C is for it to reach 1.618 times the length of primary A. That's a common Fibonacci ratio for C waves within flat corrections. And cycle wave 4 may not move into cycle wave 1 price territory. At the hourly chart level, this wave count looks, looks exactly the same as the main hourly wave count. Both wave counts are seeing a five wave impulse unfold lower. At the weekly chart level, at these highs, we have bearish long upper wicks here and there's reasonable divergence between price and RSI after price reached deeply overbought and ADX reached very extreme for the upward trend. So at these highs, conditions were very extreme. It seems reasonable to expect a trend change to either a new downward trend or a bigger, more time-consuming sideways consolidation to relieve extreme conditions. The trend change to a new downward trend would, idea would follow the main Elliott wave count and the sideways consolidation would essentially follow the alternate bullish Elliott wave counts. So those two scenarios are covered in the Elliott wave counts. On balance volume at the weekly chart level remains constrained. The resistance line has some significance. The support line only a little because there's only possibly two anchor points for it to be drawn. A breakout of the small zone may either confirm a movement from price or if it precedes a movement from price may provide a signal. This week, a downward week or an inside week with a red candlestick, essentially within the week price has fallen of its own weight but we need to look inside the week. ADX is declining this week, no clear trend at this time frame. We've been over RSI, Stochastic's essentially telling the same story, MACD still full ball bullish. At the daily chart level, price is essentially consolidating between resistance and support. We need to see a breakout from this zone to have confidence in the next movement. This downward movement this week does show a little bit of an increase in volume pushing price lower. But Friday's ended with a bullish long lower wick, a roundabout support. We may see a bounce early next week. If we see a close below the support line on a downward day which preferably has a push from volume, we can have more confidence in the next move for gold. I'll then expect it to be down and I'll look for next support about 16.10. But for now, let's expect some upward movement. Although upward movement within Friday's session didn't have support from volume. The last signal from on balance volume was a weak break below support. This support line is only just able to be drawn. It doesn't have good technical significance. This may assist to halt a rise in price, but it doesn't have good technical significance. RSI is neutral. There is plenty of room for price to rise or fall. ADX is declining. There is no clear trend at this time frame. There is weakness as well with ATR declining. Stochastics in neutral territory and MACD bearish. That's all from me this week with your gold analysis. I hope all our members are staying safe and staying well.